Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I continue to test the Taurus space plane, which I tested during live streams this weekend, and that was not very successful. I mean, it can get through re-entry, but during re-entry it can't hold its pitch, and that's presumably because the center mass is too far forward, so it tended to nose down. But then when we approached to land, it would nose up suddenly as if the center of mass was behind the center of lift, even though during the re-entry phase it didn't actually lose any fuel, so the center of mass should not be moving. Uh, so at low speeds it seemed to have the center of mass back behind the center of lift, and during re-entry the earlier phases, you know, the hot part, uh, it had the center of mass too far forward, and so I was getting contradictory information there. Now part of the reason was uh, during that I had the center of mass on the same level as the center of lift down here, so I've raised it up a little bit, which it probably should be given the sort of location of the tanks and all. This is the air test article though, this is not the space plane, space plane, this is the one that we're testing in the atmosphere. But one frustration was that far, even though things were obviously not going right, it was all green. Now in order to fix that, uh, I've decided to not use far on the wings anymore basically uh far was not being honest with me about the wings and so i've reverted to the stock aerodynamic module for the wings actually the vertical stabilizers still have far on them uh so and also the control surfaces back here still have far on them as well so right now it's not gonna read all green but the thing was that when we were having all the trouble, you know, at low speeds, it would uh, flip out be as if the center of mass was too far back. Far still red, it was green and gave a good angle of attack for when we would get lift. It was about 10 degrees. 10 degrees is fairly normal for what it rotates to in order to take off. And so it was indicating that the plane could take off, actually, with the jets. And, and yet it was obviously unstable and unable to take off properly. So now it's reading all sorts of red stuff because it doesn't see the wings at all. And you can tell it doesn't see the wings because, well, the scaled cord and steel span are wrong, right? Uh, it, the scaled cord would have to be much larger. This cord is not just two meters. I think what it's reading right now are actually the, the elevons here. And that's about all it's seeing. Maybe it's reading some of the vertical stabilizers, I don't know. So, but obviously 47 degrees angle of attack would be too much to take off with. Nevertheless, because we have the stock aerodynamic modules on it, I expect that we can take off. So let's try it out. We are half a load of kerosene. Actually, we could fit a lot more in. We're just uh, carrying like five minutes worth. I do not have lead ballast in front. So maybe I should have some lead ballast in front. And that's to counterbalance the jets because the jets are heavier than the regular engines. Though that makes us heavier overall than the actual space plane would be on landing. Okay, let's see how that works. So that's about 1.25 tons of lead in front. So I don't know what's going on with FAR uh, as far as the, the version with the FAR modules on the wings. I tried various things to move the center mass around, like lead weights and all that business, and it just did not work right. Okay, so here we are, shuttle runway. I'll use atmospheric autopilot throttle up and ignition. The jets do not quite provide a thrust to weight ratio of one. If they did, this would be rather easy to take off with. <laughs> so we need to keep the jets under a thrust to weight ratio of one. Uh, okay, see, now it takes off quite normally. That was a little bit fast, but I probably could have rotated earlier. Now we need to conserve the fuel because otherwise we'll run out. One reason why the shuttle was more of a flying brick, though not as bad as lifting body planes, is that it was very tall, right? So this is much shorter than the shuttle, using very similar relative wing area, so it is lighter. So we're expecting a lower landing speed. So parallel with the runway, 
We'll just level out here. Now it's flying okay. I'm aware, of course, that the shuttle is, you know, generally aerodynamically unstable and requires fly-by-wire, but we are using fly-by-wire, right? That's what atmospheric autopilot is. Yeah, this does not require nearly the acceleration that the jets actually provide. We could get off the ground with maybe uh, 40 to 50 percent of the thrust from these engines. That's why we can throttle so low and still fly. We've got it with fighter jet kind of thrust here. Now the space shuttle mod, space shuttle system, you know, the the one that has gone through many people, radar, uh, Dylan Simro, etc., the old component space shuttle, that version has the stock modules on the wings. That never worked with FAR. And one reason it never worked with FAR We'll just try and glide in here. Uh, one reason that didn't work with FAR is that FAR only reads the wings on the left side of the x-axis. It's one of those weird peculiarities. So you have to make sure to flip the right wing over and that's the only way FAR will read it. Otherwise you'll get a significant roll moment to one side because FAR is only reading one of the wings. But still, judging from the way FAR was handling this, it does not look like that is the only problem. <laughs> That's That might not, not have been the only problem there. We were coming in a little bit fast. We would need some air brakes if we approached like this. But I'll try and skirt over the runway a little bit. I don't usually use a whole lot of rudder because it's a twist rudder joystick. I don't have rudder pedals, so the rudder is always awkward to use, so I tend to roll more. Anyway, I'm trying to see what the actual landing speed is, so I'm just sort of hovering over it and seeing where I lose lift. Uh, I think I'll go down there. So it's got a pretty modest landing speed, uh, definitely lower than the shuttles, which I was expecting. I didn't want to keep trying that out because we'd run on our runway. So proper landing here this time. I guess the negative thrust is like from the air intakes. I don't really understand that. But okay, let's try and put the proper space plane version on top of a plane. Uh, on top of a rocket, not on top of a plane. That would be a different way to launch it, but that wouldn't work very well because it doesn't have enough fuel inside of it for that. So it flies. The problem is, uh, does it? can it keep its nose up while we're in re-entry? Now my theory right now is that because we've got the center of mass on sort of a diagonal to the center of lift, that you see uh, at a 40 degree angle, it's not quite there. Well, no, it's not too bad there. Here it's a little bit bad. You see here the center of mass and center of lift are sort of in line, so this looks pretty stable like that. But then if we go to this, you see now they're not in line. And it sort of slid this way. So I'm thinking that it's probably not gonna be hold able to hold this pitch. And this is still this is probably more like 40 degrees. Assuming the markers are even telling me the truth at all. This is more like 30 degrees-ish. So I think we're not quite there yet. See these I, I don't think it'll but would be able to hold that. But once we get to here, that seems to be something it can hold. But then it, it sort of jumps back here, here. So, I mean, I, I don't think we can trust these. But that's sort of the point of making it diagonal. See, making a diagonal relationship between the center of mass and center of the lift is to foster it keeping that angle during re-entry. But... Yeah, so keeping in mind that this is what we had on the jet, let's take a look at the regular version that's going to space. So it's basically the same. So that's what we're going to try and go with. But we will initially be fully loaded with fuel. Well, we might not be. I think we're going to try and put it on a Vulcan rocket and with six boosters. I tried it with a Vulcan rocket already, but that Vulcan rocket... Uh, did not have the upper stage and we did not get to 
orbit like that. So I did this Vulcan C during the live stream, and I used the normal Centaur adapter, because that fit better. And this did not quite make it, but we were omitting the Centaur stage to save cost. Um, but this did not work very well. It does have aerodynamic issues. In real life, it would probably not be safe, especially from wind gusts. I was able to get it through, but and a computer could be able to get it through, uh, but the wind gusts would uh, are not being simulated here. So I think that it would not be considered safe. And yeah, you can see the Delta V as 9,000, and that's with us fully fueled with the Taurus. If we underfuel it, it just reduces the Delta V. It doesn't help the lower stages at all. Already their thrust weight ratio is pretty high because we're missing the Centaur stage. So let's just put the Centaur stage and see what we can do. Keeping in mind that we had 9,000 and we were pretty close to orbit. We just need a little bit more. So what we're aiming for is low Earth orbit. We already know that SLS could get this to the moon with no, with, with, with no problem. So that is not an issue. We don't need the 19 minute burn time. We'll see what's optimal here. I mean, here it says uh, 10,800, but first of all, it's not showing the Taurus's own delta V, so we have a staging problem. And second of all, that thrust weight ratio is going to haunt us. And actually, we need a decoupler up there. Okay, so now we see the situation that we have here as far as delta V. I wonder why it's got 1,543. Seems a little bit low. Don't tell me we're carrying some lead in here. No. Oh, because the wings have reverted to the non-FAR masses. I'll have to review what the... FAR actually made the wings lighter than I initially made them. <laughs> Which is nice of it. Um, yeah, FAR actually made the wings lighter. I'll have to go back to what FAR said the wings were supposed to be instead of what I've got them as. I overestimated the wing mass compared to what FAR had. So... Anyway, so we're a little bit heavier than normal. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, so yeah, 0.22 for 19 minutes is not a good thrust to weight ratio, but there's nothing we can do there that's gonna make it great. But what we want is just to make sure that we can get to space properly. And we don't really need all that delta V for low Earth orbit operations. So if we can just carry 568, that should do the trick that's more than the shuttle had. So if we can manage this, then Vulcan will work out. But And the thrust weight ratio initially is pretty strong. That doesn't really, that's not necessarily a good thing with the aerodynamics, but it's probably, uh, on one side, the thrust weight ratio being lower with the center on it is helpful for the aerodynamics. But on the other side, the centaur being there makes the whole thing taller, which is not helpful for the aerodynamics, so it's sort of a toss-up. All right, uh, let's put some kerbals in so that we can test them floating around in there for once. Uh, I noticed during the live stream that I accidentally mis uh, messed up the normals on the back of it, and so it's possible to look through it. The, this back panel seems to be wrong, so I'll have to fix that, but that's still an issue. Okay, let us launch. Okay, so we have to be careful about how we launch this. I'm going to have to keep fairly close to the prograde vector. But uh, SAS on, throttle up, ignition. We're launching from Kuru, by the way. And that is because somebody mentioned potentially using this to service the the James Webb Space Telescope, and I don't know if that's possible. That would require SLS. We can't do this, that on this. Hubble we could do on this, but not James Webb. And so I launched a James Webb. I wonder if it's, it's still up there somewhere, right? Unfortunately, it's basically in solar orbit. There it is, James Webb Space Telescope. Yeah, it's in solar orbit, though. So... It's not easy to get to. We can't 
without Principia do the Lagrange points. So I'm gonna try and keep the pitch to a half of its range. We're gonna go pretty steeply initially, but that's fine for the Centaur. Far, even though it doesn't read the wings, is still managing the atmosphere. The atmosphere is fundamentally changed from the stock atmosphere, and how going through transonic works is fundamentally changed, so it's much nicer with realism overhaul. Okay, separation. That's always a bit iffy, but I don't want to put separatrons on those. I know if you put the decouplers in a certain position, it'll knock off a little bit better, but I'm worried about the bottom ends knocking the engine, so... We would just like them to have a more vigorous release. Here, it's a question of how high do we need to go to let the Centaur finish its work. Okay, separation and ignition. Ah, the Centaur is still not going to get to orbit, if that's true. Did it top off? Oh, we, we topped off the Taurus. Ah, uh, we, we weren't supposed to top off the Taurus. We were supposed to have a partially filled Taurus. And separation and ignition. Ah, uh, the AJ-10-190s. They should be able to hold it on their own without the RCS, right? Hmm. Well, the AJ-10-190s were pointing through the original center of masts. We've moved that up, so that might be a minor issue. <laughs> it won't. As long as they can do this much, it's fine. Because oh, as the fuel depletes, the center mass moves forward, making it easier for the engines to point through it. So it's a little bit distasteful that it's using this much of the gimbling to do it, but. As long as it can hold it without the RCS, that's okay. Eh, it's not working very well. Okay, okay, okay. This is not the re-entry test I want to do. Let's underfuel it, lock those tanks, and see if the Centaur can get into orbit properly. Here we go again. Wonder why the electric charge starts out not topped off. Anyway, ignition. And launch. Obviously getting to orbit from Kuru is easier than normal, but we're trying to pack enough spare Delta V that it wouldn't matter either way. Even if it was from the Cape, we wouldn't fall short is the goal. Is the goal. Oh, I'm slower turning this time than previously. Oh, that maxed out. Uh... Whew. That was close. And booster set. Yeah, just in case it isn't clear from the discussion earlier, when you have the far module on the wings, the wing mass gets calculated by the numbers that are inputted into far, and so it overrides the stock masses. And so when we remove the far module, it restored the stock masses, and that's why the wings are now heavier than they were before, because far actually made them lighter. So it looks like right now we have sort of enough if you take the sum of the orbital velocity in our stage delta V, that's 7,800, but uh, it's tight and we, we have the whole business of needing to wait nine minutes, so it's still an issue. Yeah, uh, I don't think the Centaur is going to make orbit. We'll need some fuel from the Taurus in order to finish it off. Okay, coming out of Fizz Warp. Almost in orbit. It's pretty close. Maybe a more optimal trajectory would work. Yeah, very close. A slightly lower trajectory would do. We overshot just a little bit. 
So the centaur gets disposed of, and we get to orbit. I want to get into a standard one and a half hour orbit. But our periapsis is pretty close to where we want to deorbit, so we have to be careful. And I'm expecting more drag out of this than the shuttle gets, so I'll go with 30 kilometers. Well, okay, 28, that's fine. All right, let's see about re-entry. Can it hold its nose up a little bit better than last time? Or was my attempt... Oh, I forgot the fuel cells again. I mean, it should be able to do one orbit without the fuel cell on, but... Not a whole lot more than that, actually. Okay, we are in the atmosphere, but nothing serious is going to happen for a while. Now, it does occur to me that I used the deorbit location for the Cape, but we actually took off from Kuru. <laughs> so, uh, we're probably going to fall short as a result of that. The Cape is here. I should have waited longer in order to do the deorbit burn, in order to reach Kuru. Hopefully, we'll at least get to land. Already, it's using some pitch authority at 86 kilometers, so again, that's indicating that our center of mass is too far forward. In order to hold a six, uh, 40 degree pitch, I mean. We'll see what it ends up being able to hold as we are getting into daylight here. Okay, we're basically maxed out on pitch at 74 kilometers. It's still holding 40 degrees. So it's better, I think. <laughs> I increased the heat tolerance on the engines. They were at like 800 degrees Kelvin. I gave them 1200 degrees Kelvin. But really, it's a matter of thermal conductivity. The body is somehow conducting heat to them more than it should. The heat tolerance on this matches the heat tolerance on the space shuttle, which I had set based on the fact that the space shuttle has to be able to survive, basically. So I set it to where the space shuttle has some overheating, but survives. Uh, and if you take it in on the wrong trajectory, it will have parts explode due to overheating. Uh, and Based on that, we have the same heat tolerance on this because it is using the same heat tile system. If you have better heat tiles, it would have better heat shielding. The actual numbers used for heat shielding, the temperatures seem really high compared to what the temperatures these tiles should be able to withstand are. But you have to go with what actually works based on the fact that the space shuttle actually was able to re-enter, right? So... Yeah, what can I say? Yeah, it's still almost uh, got a 40 degree pitch, and but we are still maxed out. We would like it to be able to hold that 40 degree pitch, pitch without even using the RCS much. Unless we can do that, it won't be able to do any of the uh, energy management rolling, the S-turns, or any of that business. If it's using all of its RCS authority just to hold its nose up, that's no good. Uh, yeah, I'm worried about falling short here. Oddly enough, uh, if we let it drop its nose, we might be in a better situation so that we get more lift that way. Right now, 40 degrees is high drag. Let's see what the neutral pitch is. We're a little bit slower now, after all. And uh, we've gone up a little bit, too. Yeah, so it, it seems to be able to do 31 without using the RCS at all. You can see that. So this is more like what we want to see out of it at 40 degree pitch. And so we need to move the center of mass a little bit further back. And one reason we want to see it be able to hold that at 40 degree pitch is not so much for low Earth orbit. Obviously, it's been able to survive at low lower pitch in low Earth orbit. The issue is that we need to be able to come back from the moon, and there we need as much drag as possible. So we can't risk having extra lift there. We need to make sure that it can come in, maybe even at a 60 degree angle would be good. We need to have it come in more like a pod than necessarily like a shuttle. 
we didn't actually test Jeb and Bob floating in the in the cabin or anything. Need to make sure to do that, just in case there's a collider in the wrong place or something. Okay, we're getting out of the flame effects. Decided it was safe to use Fizz Warp. We're at 52 kilometers. Still over water. And slowing down rapidly. Can we get to Columbia? I don't think so. I might drop our nose down a bit to see if we can glide more. Ah, that speed is going down pretty fast though. Yeah, right now, very nicely stable. <laughs> it's a very nice little space plane now. I can't see below the cloud. The land is all the way over there. It's gonna be tough. Uh, let's just dump the remaining fuel. Atmospheric autopilot would probably stabilize that. Uh, let's see. Yes, it does. Okay, three kilometers. Close, yet so far. I mean, if we were landing at Cape Canaveral, we wouldn't even have had to try and extend our glide. We would be basically on it without doing too much work, but yeah, I accidentally used the Dior point for Cape Canaveral instead of for Kourou, because I don't usually return to Kourou. Maybe we can use the landing gear to get some extra drag, I don't, uh, you know, slow us down before the body hits the water. I don't know if that works or not. We're using a lot of pitch authority. We're close to stalling there. Ooh, okay. It didn't even rip, rip off the landing gear. All right, well, uh, feel like we're slowly sinking, but still. Uh, yes, we have splashed down, so it could land. It could land. We have some improvements to make, but there you have it. It can launch on Vulcan, and uh, that, I mean, in real life, the gusts would probably cause a problem. And all right, we'll have, uh, have not EVA. We can't do an EVA with the pass-through stuff. And Oh, look, it is flooding. <laughs> Uh, okay, leave seat. Sure, that works out very well. Uh, okay. Uh, can actually walk around inside because this isn't space. Actually, that causes problems. This big head can barely get through the seats. Oh, oh, is he stuck on something? Hop. Can't really hop. I th oh, it's because of the water, maybe. Hmm. Okay, no, we're we're moving. We're moving. He went over that. Stumbled a bit. Okay. Well, let's go on this side. Let's see. Up. Oh, no way to go there. Okay. Can climb on it though. Technically, he's partly underwater. Obviously, a human-sized individual would be able to have stuff on top of these bearings which contain the OMS fuel. And we could carry some packages on top there. Even though it's not great that it's a sort of curved surface. We could have something. Open hatch. Oh, wait. Is there a particular... From this distance, we can open hatch. Interesting. Well, we don't want him to go swimming, though. Uh, let's close hatch and make sure that... Can't go through, right? This bumps into it. Anyway, floating around inside is more of a challenge. In terms of checking out the colliders, walking around isn't great. But anyway, in principle... It works. So... There you have it, the Taurus space plane, and we'll keep working on it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.